kind of break them down and then, you know, we'll go deeper into them tomorrow, but I want to go, I just want to uh, get some things off my chest and regarding them, the timing that they're released. I, I mean, I, I, listen, I got a note, several pages in my notebook full of, um, uh, questions, I guess, or state red flags, all the above. So, how many of you have heard the 911 calls already? And if you have, what does your guys take on it? If you've heard it. If not, then... Hey, Bruce. Well, you don't count Puff or Eddie. Because, <laughs> but well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I want to know your opinion, but I'm saying I already know you see, you've heard it. Yeah, you don't get an opinion. Shush. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so let me share screen. Hey, Tennessee man. <laughs> you can't quit, Eddie. It's not allowed. Haven't heard any of them. Haven't heard. Okay, so several of you have not heard them. Awesome. Well, not. Yeah, I'm just, I'm being selfish. Awesome. So you're going to hear it here first. All right, so what we're going to do. First, I'm going to just play it in its entirety. It's only like two minutes and uh, 42 seconds. Okay. Two different calls. And then after I let it play in its entirety with no interruptions, then I'm going to play it again and I'm going to do commentary like of things that stood out to me. And um, I have notes already pulled up, ready to go. So, and I also have it transcribed so that um, if people can't hear things clearly, I'll put the PDF after this and we'll go over it in text version. And then, you know, we'll, we're just going to break it all the way down. And I mean, all the way down to the words that are used and the, the way they form the sentences The you know, I'm going to just, I'm going to get into all of it and how it makes me feel. So let me start this with, this is all alleged. And in my opinion, um, please do your own research, form your own opinions, do not go harass or be nasty to anybody based off of anything that you hear during this stream. Thank you so much. Um, and strong language uh, warning because I'm going to say fuck a lot. So you've been warned. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, let me just say it was released with the bare minimum it's got like it's the audio um the way it was released on the news station it was released on it's got like a like just a picture of noah the one that we've all seen um there's nothing with it there's no times there's no description there's no names there's no just literally the the these what you're about to hear is what it that's it so let me just say before that that's why i'm not playing the news one because it's just it it's it's a waste. Uh, let's go. 911, what is your emergency? Hey, on Highway 81, just north of Terrell, in between Terrell and Ryan, Oklahoma, it's probably about three miles north of Terrell. Dropped down the road, and I had a bunch of cars behind me, but it looked like somebody got hit, like somebody walking down the highway laying on the shoulder of the road. It looks like somebody's laying in the road. Uh, like on the shoulder, like maybe they were walking and somebody hit them. Unless it was a deer, it looked like a body. Okay. Um, you said, so on Highway 81, uh, in north. between Ryan and Terrell, just north of Terrell, about, probably about three miles, kind of in a low spot. 
Okay. Um, and is that uh, going to be, I'm trying to think which way that highway runs. Is it going to be on your east, west, north, or south? I'm trying to think. I'm it, sorry. It goes north and south. It, it runs out of Duncan. Okay. So what side of the road is that on? It would be on the west side of the road. Okay. Let me see what I have on duty to go check that out. It just it looked awful odd. Nine one one, what is your emergency? Uh, yes, ma'am. I was driving to work. I'm south of Terrell or north of Terrell, south of Ryan. Yes. And I'm pretty sure there's somebody laying dead along the road. They look naked. Uh, I'm staying back. Okay, I but. just um had uh, two calls on that and um I have a deputy headed that way. All right. Well I'm and sitting you? here blocking the road. Oh, are you there waiting? Okay. Because he's what right? What, the body's laying right on a white line. Oh, that, it is a boy. He's naked and he's wet, laying on the white line. He's naked. I I turned around because I just about hit it because I was there's a deer run across the road and I'm like first I thought it was a deer and I was talking to a guy I work with. I'm like I don't think that's a deer. Yeah, that's and, what the, my first caller said. Thought it was a deer and then when he looked back and he said, No, there's no way that's a deer. <laughs> No, no, and it, it actually looks like there's a piece of clothing maybe laying in the middle of the road now. I'm about, I don't want to get too close, I just... Oh, Jeremy, right now. No, this is don't. another 911 call that's looking at, looking at it. Oh, she's already been in touch with Jeremy. Okay, yeah, Jeremy's going to head that way. Jeremy's heading that way, she's done that okay. way. All right. Okay, um, so you're staying there, or... Yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and make sure nobody runs it over... Anything okay. else? I mean, I have a patron uh, art reporting party staying there until a deputy gets there to okay. block so nobody hits them again. There is a uh, the reporting party is going to sit there with flashers on it. So. Okay. okay, guys. So, uh, what do you think? Okay, we have He said so does he know it? Then he said it. Interesting both mention a deer. Mm. Is it, it is indeed interesting. If Caden's time are correct, these are actually not the first people to find Noah. That is correct, Edwina. Now in the background, you can hear them talking about calling Jeremy in the background. Weird, doesn't seem very professional. No, not in the slightest. Who is Jeremy, the deputy? Any relation to the party goers? No, Jeremy is the Jefferson County Sheriff, Bia. The one who owned the mini mark, you know, with the cameras, you know, the store with the cameras and Terrell, but, you know, he sold it since, you know, it's that guy. 911 operators are trained to avoid sharing information from previous calls to prevent contaminating the evidence and influencing the narrative. <laughs> well, apparently this one has not been trained, I'd assume. Hey, but let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she's new. <laughs> Is there sound? There should be. Odd 911 calls for sure. I hear nothing. Oh no. 
but this is a little hick town on in Oklahoma. They do things the oaky way, and maybe it should be the nopey way. You're surprised. You'd be surprised how different things are. Well, well. Was they in a kitchen making jam or a dispatch center? I could I could argue either one at this point. Um, I didn't hear much dispatching going on. It sounded like mm. the second caller sounds more believable, but both could be scripted. My fam is from Oklahoma, and I've lived there. Oh, that explains a lot, Eddie. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Seems fabricated if you cannot provide all the information that... Indeed. Sold his store to go be an archaeologist. LOL hints that code to get out of Dodge in Oklahoma and Texas. Why didn't she ask, what do you mean, odd? She didn't seem to really want to know much of anything, um, which makes me believe that we either got some chopped and screwed because it sounds like they just kind of cut the first one in the middle of a conversation, which wouldn't surprise me at this point, or um, or or they just really, really, really need to do some re rehiring retraining or all because i mean holy crap this cannot be like standard uh protocol like and you want to know what it's funny you mentioned that because i went on a mission after i heard this um earlier today and i was curious about just that very thing right there and i listened i found this place this web not this place this website where um as long as it's like within the last 24 hours you can hear like dispatch and emergency you know 911 calls and it's funny, like, that doesn't seem to be the way that all the the rest of them are handled. Like, it's, it's, uh, bizarre. I don't even have a word to suffice that's not going to, like, get ratchet. So I'm trying to be not ratchet. But it's, uh, sometimes you just got to let your inner ratchet out and say, well, what the fucking fuck? Sorry.
from this way. Hey, Radisa. Well, okay. Now, keep in mind that we had already... Uh, let me go here to the... Um, if you guys remember, it, we got to hear that weird... Why am I going to Facebook? That weird little snippet of um, the the EMS, or I guess the fire rescue. That that has a timestamp, and that you know they're and, and they're using you know codes and uh and that was just as confusing. So it it's very bizarre. Um, but the timestamp on the this one, the fire is. 6 34 a.m so and i can only say this i don't know i can't confirm it there's no way to confirm it but the what's being buzzed around in the facebook groups as far as the 911 calls allegedly one of them came through at 5 46 a.m and the other one allegedly supposedly came through at 5 53 but there's nothing in black and white that i have found that can corroborate that or confirm that um it's just been speculation and things that's being thrown around by individuals involved like in the Facebook groups but this actually has a timestamp on it that you can see so if nothing else you know we have Caden's story and then you have Tyler's story Tyler Hardy the the service truck driver one of the service truck drivers then you have this strange 911 call or calls and according to her there's multiple apparently so that makes you wonder like okay how many is there total like why are you picking and choosing which ones we get to hear and why now you know why are you releasing it now that's that's the bigger thing like what is what are in my opinion what are you trying to uh, draw attention from and put onto this because that is more concerning to me considering they have not wanted to come off of nothing this entire investigation, unless you're <laughs> jack and steamy, you ain't getting shit. But now they're just dropping 911 calls, like freaking, you know, drop, like, what? Like, dropping that brass, like, stripper booty up in here? Like, what do you, what do you, like, without having to pull teeth or without having to have a Freedom of Information Act, you're just, here we go, just giving up? Why? Why are you, why now? Like, mm -mm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not buying it. All right, let's listen to this.
Okay, that's a good point. Okay, now let's for a second switch gears and just listen to a couple of these Jefferson County. Okay, we got Sheriff Dispatch, Public Service, Fire and EMS, or Highway Maintenance. Which one should we listen to? We can listen to a little bit of all of them, but just to kind of give perspective on what is what it normally sounds like when they have... And emerge, you know, what is their what is their uh, normal response? What does it sound like? Um, uh, Jefferson County is in Oklahoma. Highway Patrol Troop G OHP in Jefferson County is dispatched by the law in office on O. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. Let's see. Hmm. Lawton Comanche. That would probably be it. Interesting. Okay. All right, let's go to the Sheriff Dispatch. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the station's no longer available. I bet. Here we go. Oh, not Ohio. Okay. So these, what's today? The 8th. So this was... A few hours ago. First responders, I need you en route to 724 East G. David. Uh, head trauma with a possible seizure. Okay, let's pause right here. We got an address. We got a description of the in what is going on. The um. Okay, what the? So are they giving us over here that we're supposed to be listening? Okay, 
let's listen to some more. And then we'll go back to the other one and, and see how much is lacking once you listen to a couple of these and realize, um, you work for the same people. Why are you doing so different? 724 East King David. Attention, Marika M. at run number 325 is taking you to JCH for a transport back to the patient's house. EMS run number 324 is taking you to 726 East Broadway here in Morica. Again, run number 324 is taking you to 726 East Broadway in Morica. Medicine Park First Responders, they are out to State Highway 115 and Rush Lake Road, State Highway 115 and Rush Lake Road, it's going to be in a white Kia Sorento with the hazards on, have a two-year-old male, not conscious breathing, possible seizure, all traffic will be, all traffic will be on fire down three, fire down three, this is the second and final page for Medicine Park at 1337. 
that was 35 seconds long and it had more information than Noah's autopsy had. And I'm not even being funny. Like, what the actual hell? Okay, so you have to tell me that because it was found, okay, regardless of where the 911 call came in from, okay, there was already volunteer firefighters and volunteer, or not volunteer, there was already volunteer firefighters in, in uniform deputies on scene before the lead investigator of the case, which was OHP, got there an hour later, okay? Now, you can't tell me that regardless of what county, what district, or what level of, whether it be EMS, fire department, or at this point, a, a deputy, or, or even a step further and say the sheriff, the county sheriff at that, that they were not trained and, and properly knew how to secure a scene, whether it be a crime scene or an act, regardless, it is a scene, someone is deceased, and immediately lock it down, block traffic, and get everybody out of there. That is not emergency personnel and start preserving what is there on scene, whether that be items of clothing, whether that be footprints, whether that it, I, I mean, at this point there, that's not their job. They're not accident investigators, but you can't tell me that because they weren't the ones in charge of this case that they didn't have training to say, Hey, maybe I should run these people off. And, um, I don't know, call for backup. I mean, what did, what, what the fuck were they doing? Just sitting there twiddling their thumbs for an hour and a half. Like that's a long fucking time from five fifteen till six thirty four, And then OHP didn't get there until seven fucking 18. Come on. They don't, well, you, if you don't have people closer then maybe you should reevaluate. What the f don't sit I don't even have words. That's that is that's horseshit. That's a cop out. Um, well, you see, that depends on who you ask, because according to the autopsy, let me pull that up. Riley's. Okay, here's Noah's. 
Sorry about that. Okay, according to the autopsy, it says, Trooper Examiner Notified um, by the Super Zach Wright, Oklahoma Highway Patrol, Troop G, on September 4, 2023, at 7.31 a.m. Injured or became ill at unknown, day unknown, time unknown, and then it's got latitude and longitude, Terrell, Jefferson, type of premises, highway. Then it says date, 9-4-2023, found, time, 6-18 a.m., found. Okay, so what is 7-31 and 6-18? Okay, so that's a clusterfuck in itself, trying to decipher what that's supposed to mean. So then we go to the... Significant observations and injury documentation. Please use space below. Decedent, who was found on the side of highway on September 4, 2023, died of multiple blunt force injuries. What a, you know, God, I, what a way with words. <laughs> um, This, blah, blah, medical examiner. So findings, blah, blah, blah. We don't want to get into that because... Opinion. In consideration of the circumstances surrounding the death, autopsy examination, and toxicology result, the death of Noah Alexander Nichols is due to multiple blood force injuries. The descendant was found naked, wearing only a pair of shoes, on the side of the highway on the morning of September 4, 2023. There were no vehicle parts or debris observed on the scene at the time. What transpired on how the body was found on the road having multiple blood force injuries is unknown. Therefore, the manner of death is deemed undetermined. The autopsy was completed by a medical examiner in Oklahoma City on the next day at 1 o'clock. Circumstances of death. The descendant was a 19-year-old male who was found on the southbound side of a highway by a passing truck driver on September 4th. 2023 at approximately 5.53 hours. So that would be 5.53 a.m. He was naked and only wearing unmatching shoes. There was a pair of shorts found several feet from the descendant and was reported to be his. Additionally, there were three pieces of a white metal chain as well as part of the tooth present several feet from the descendant. Also, there was a clump of hair found within one of the lanes of the highway several feet from the descendant. Additionally, a clump of hair was observed on the right buttocks without blood or tissue. The paved highway consisted of two lanes with shoulders on both sides and a speed limit of 65 miles per hour. The highway was poorly lit at night. There were no vehicle parts or debris observed on scene, and further investigation revealed that the descendant was at a house party and drinking on September 3rd, 2023. Then he rode an ATV Ranger vehicle with several men that had a rollover incident. The descendant, the descendant was alive following the incident and returned to the party where he got into an argument with his girlfriend. The descendant left the house party and was not found until the morning of September 4th, 2023 on the side of the highway. Subsequent scientific identification was made by visual tag. And then this just goes into the describings. Okay. External. Yeah, we're not going to get into that. Not today. And that's it. So... According to this, now let's go back. There's nothing on here that says five fifty three. 
Okay, we got 618, 731. But then you come down here to where it says the circumstances of death, we got 553. Okay, now it doesn't say whether or not there was a passing truck driver. At this point, this it doesn't mean that's a semi truck. It could have been the service truck. I mean, you could if you're driving a truck, ultimately you could be referred to as a truck driver. Now, granted, it's more common to call a you know a a big truck. A, you know, but regardless, we can play semantics with this shit all day. And I think that's the intention because there's so much to wiggle room to play with. It just leaves it open for speculation, and that is never. Uh, you know, when <sighs> there's enough to speculate about in this gosh darn case. Okay. Okay, so let's. Sorry, I'm just catching up on Siebel. Oh my god, I thought did I forget to put the sign back up? Height requirement, you little twerp. I'm coming here harassing my ninjas. Okay, now let's go. Nine one one. What is your emergency? Hey, on Highway eighty one, just north of Terrell, in between Terrell and Ryan, Oklahoma, it's probably about three miles north of Terrell. Dropped down the road, and I had a bunch of cars behind me, but it looked like somebody got hit, like somebody walking down the highway, laying on the shoulder of the road. 
it looks like somebody's laying in the road. Uh, like on the shoulder, like maybe they were walking and somebody hit them, unless it was a deer. It looked like a body. Okay. Um, you said, so on Highway 81, uh, in north. between Ryan and Terrell, just north of Terrell, about, it's probably about three miles, it's kind of in a low spot. Okay. Um, and is that, uh, Gonna be, I'm trying to think which way that highway runs. Is it going to be on your east, west, north, or south? I'm trying to think. I'm it, sorry. It goes north and south. It, get, it runs out of Duncan. Okay. So what side of the road is that on? It, it'd be on the west side of the road. Okay. Let me... Now, didn't we just read in the autopsy report? It said... The southbound lane? Southbound side of the highway is what it says. Okay. Right here, where I highlighted it. And now let's listen to that again. Oh, and this ain't the first contradiction. This is just I new. I, had, I hadn't looked at it in comparison to the autopsy report. As you can see, it took me a minute to dig the autopsy report out, so I haven't looked at it in a while. That, uh, gonna be, I'm trying to think which way that highway runs. Is it going to be on your east, west, north, or south? I'm trying to think. I'm it, sorry. It goes north and south. It, get, it runs out of Duncan. Okay. So what side of the road is that on? It, it'd be on the west side of the road. West side. Okay. Let me see who I have on duty to go check that out. <laughs> That's it. It just, it looked awful odd. 911, what is your emergency? Uh, yes, ma'am. I was driving to work. I'm south of Terrell, or north of Terrell, south of Ryan, yes. and I'm pretty sure there's somebody laying dead along the road. They look naked. Uh, I'm staying back. Okay, I but. just um, had uh, two calls on that, and um, I have a deputy headed that way. All right, well, I'm and sitting you? here blocking the road. Oh, are you there waiting? Okay. Because he's what, right, the body's laying right on a white line. Oh, dang. it is a boy. He's naked and he's wet laying on the white line. He's naked. I I turned around because I just about hit it because I was there's a deer run across the road and I'm like first I thought it was a deer and I was talking to a guy I work with. I'm like I don't think that's a deer. Yeah, that's and, what that my first caller said. Thought it was a deer and then when he looked back and he said no, there's no way that's a deer. <laughs> no, no, and it it actually looks like there's a piece of clothing maybe laying in the middle of the road now. I'm about, I don't want to get too close. I just. Oh, Jeremy, right now. No, this is nope. another 911 call that sit, looks in at, looking at it. Oh, she's already been in touch with Jeremy. Okay. Yeah, Jeremy's going to head that way. Jeremy's heading that way. She's coming that okay. way. Okay. Okay. Um, so you're staying there or? Yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and make sure nobody runs it over or anything okay. else. I mean. I have a patron, a uh, art reporting party staying there until a deputy gets there to okay. block so nobody hits them again. There is a uh, reporting party that's going to sit there with flashers on it. So. Okay. Okay, first call. Why is there no timestamps or date mentioned anywhere? First caller says he has a bunch of cars behind him. So if that's the case, would a bunch of people had to see Noah as well? Why would they not pull over like he did or at least call it into 911? Why don't we have all those people's eyewitness accounts? If they exist, why would they not have came forward by now and said they drove by and seen something? Didn't know what it was and at the time, but after seeing the news, realized it was Noah. Weird. Why would he say it looked like somebody got hit? How does he know that from just driving by and getting a glance at him? 
He said it looked like somebody was walking down the highway and got hit and is now laying on the shoulder of the road. That's a rather specific assessment or assumption to gather from just seeing a body on the highway. He's able to make this judgment based off his observations, but he doesn't mention Noah being naked. Bizarre. Then he says, unless it was a deer, question mark, um, wait, what? How does it go from looking like someone was walking down the highway and got hit to the next sentence is unless it's a deer asking for a friend? He says it's kind of in a low spot. What does that mean? The 911 operator didn't know which direction the highway traveled and needed it broken all the way down for her. Maybe she's new. The call ends with caller saying it looked awful odd. Well, that's the first thing he said that makes sense, in my opinion. Next call. Now, the reason I'm not calling this first call and second call is because in this next call, we hear that this is not the second call because she says, the operator, that she had two calls previous to this. So I don't know what number call this is. So we're just going to call it the next call. So operator says she just had two calls about this. So where's the other call? How many others came in? Why do we only get to hear these two? And why release them now? What's the ulterior motive? The caller says he. How does he know it's a he if you're not getting close and thought it was a deer? And what the fuck is up with all the talk of the deer? I mean. Then he says, I almost hit it instead of him. Weird verbiage shifting going on. There was a deer running across the road. It almost made him hit Noah. Wait, what? Talking to a guy that works with him, like on the phone, or is this person riding in the truck with him, asking for a friend? Piece of clothing in the middle of the road. What kind of clothing? Shorts? What color were they? Were they folded? Lady in the background mentions Jeremy being contacted and heading that way. Jeremy Wilson, previous owner of the Mini Mart. Carol, the place allegedly has cameras that point towards the highway. Store has changed owners since the incident. Jeremy is also the Jefferson County Sheriff. Several of Noah's family members say he was the first LE to arrive on scene. He's also the one that was still on scene by the time Daylin and Victor got there, which is Noah's brother and father, at 7.15-ish. So here is the transcript. I transcribed it. We got first call. Operator says 911. What is your emergency? Caller says something at the beginning that I, I've tried to slow down, enhance. I, I can't catch it. So unintelligible. And then he says, yeah, on Highway 81, just north of Terrell. In between Terrell and Ryan, Oklahoma. It's probably about three miles north of Terrell. I'm driving down the road. And I had a bunch of cars behind me, but it looked like somebody got hit, like somebody walking down the highway, laying on the shoulder of the road. Operator, it looked like somebody was laying in the road. Caller, uh, like on the shoulder, like maybe they were walking and someone hit them, unless it was a deer, but it looked like a body. Operator, okay, um, so you said on Highway 81, uh, caller, in between Ryan and Terrell, just north of Terrell, about, it's probably about three miles, kind of in a low spot. Operator, okay, and is that uh, going to be, I'm trying to think which way the highway runs. Is it going to be on your east, west, north, or south? I'm trying to think. I'm sorry. Caller, it goes north and south. It runs out of Duncan. Operator, okay, so what side of the road is that on? Caller, it's, it's, it'll be on the west side of the road. Operator, okay, let me see who I have on duty to go check that out. Caller, like I said, it looked awful odd. Then it cuts out and goes to the second call. Operator, 911, what is your emergency? Caller, yes, ma'am, I was driving to work. I'm south of Terrell or north of Terrell, south of Ryan. Operator, yes. Caller, and I'm pretty sure there's somebody laying dead along the road. They look naked. I'm staying back. Operator, okay, I just um had two calls on that, and um I have a deputy headed that way. Caller, all right, well, I'm sitting here blocking the road. Operator, oh, are you there waiting? Okay. 
collar because he's white, right? The body's laying right on the white line. Operator. Oh, it's a body. He's naked and he's laying on the white line. Background speaker. He's naked. Collar. To, collar. I, I turned around because I just about hit it because I was. Okay. Said so I turned around because I almost hit it because I was there was a deer running across the road and I'm like first I thought it was a deer and I was talking to a guy that works with me and he said no nah, I don't think that's a deer operator yeah that's what my first caller said thought it was a deer and then he looked back and he said no there's no way that's a deer caller no no and. It, it actually looks like there's a piece of clothing maybe laying in the middle of the road now. I'm about – I don't want to get too close. I just – background speaker says Jeremy right now. Then the operator says, no, this is another 911 call that's looking at it. Background speaker, oh, she's already been in touch with Jeremy. Operator, yeah, Jeremy is going to head that way. Background speaker. Jeremy's heading that way and then unintelligible. Operator says, okay, um, and then the caller says, all right. The operator says, so you're staying there, or the caller says, yeah, I'll just go ahead and make sure nobody runs it over or anything else. Anything else? We'll come back to that. Operator, okay, I have a patron or um, reporting party say, staying there until a deputy gets there to block and make sure nobody hits him. Then the background speaker says there is a uh, reporting party that's going to sit there with flashers on. Now, who the hell said anything about flashers? I mean, but do, but when you say the type of vehicle, like you know to look for, I mean that's a big stretch of highway, and I mean it just seems a little bizarre that there's nothing described like okay what is the is it a, a male female before it, it could be a deer it could be a body but it's uh, they're referring to it as him yeah. naked not saying white male young male um describing the vehicles oh this is what i'm driving this is what is you know what is the the lack of detail is bizarre I mean, you don't even, we don't even know what time, but I mean, besides what the autopsy says, and at this point, eh, eh, nah. I'm not too, I'm, I'm not going to freaking hang my money on the damn autopsy, because I know for a fact there's injuries that he had by people that seen him in his casket at the funeral that were not in the autopsy, so what does that tell you? It tells you, if nothing else, they weren't very thorough, and I have a big problem with not doing your due diligence. I mean, you have one job, whatever that is, do it to the best of your ability and do it the way it's supposed to be done or let someone else do it. It's not that hard. You can't just be half ass and shit when it's, I mean, this is somebody's son, somebody's brother, somebody's nephew, somebody's grandson. Like you just treated it like it was a I don't even know, like a petty theft case or something that you handle and just, yeah, pocus, pocus, pish, posh. Like, uh, there was more detail. 
in the damn little 30 second clip we listened to of the uh, EMS or whatever for Warika, then there wasn't that entire autopsy report. And you can't tell me that it differs that much from city to city inside the same county. And if so, then Jeremy Wilson talking to you, bud, you need to get your head out of your ass. That's your county, and they all should be getting the same training and should be under the same protocol and policies. It shouldn't matter, like, oh, if you're on this side, if you're if you're on this zip code, you, you better not have have your fuck. Like, no, you should. What? That's that's just lazy. It is a cop out, and it's ex, it's an excuse, but it's like really just across the board. No offense, to, I'm not trying to offend anybody if you are in here and you are from there or live there, but Oklahoma is like just a hot fucking mess. I'm definitely not going to give them the, a scholar award on much of uh, anything as far as law enforcement or anything of the such because, uh, uh, nope, that's not even close. I could show you a thing or two, like what a press conference should look like or what a, how a case should be handled. Like, I mean, Grady Judd does three of them a week. Now, I granted, I know there's got to be a middle ground. Not everybody's like Grady Judd, but Jesus Christ, there's got to be a middle ground at least. Come on, I mean, why? So, so. Oh, thought it's because of the hurricanes there. Why is it so windy in Texas? Because it sucks in Oklahoma. <laughs> so let's now that you know my thoughts and stuff, we're gonna y'all can we're going to listen to it again and pay more attention to the stuff I said because what I said is more important. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just listen to it with new blinders on. Or with your new blinders off, I mean. Hello? Is anybody out there? Hello? 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 Can anybody hear me? Anybody try to hear me? Anybody? Anybody? Can anybody in the chat hear Kaylee? I can't hear anybody. Is Kaylee not speaking? Did I bounce her off? I said, get out of here. No, I'm just kidding. 
Let's try eating some towards us real quick. What did you say, Ruben? Nope. Oh, look what the cat drug in. <laughs> I have been a busy. That fucking yeah. water line broke again, man. This is the fifth fucking time. I'm mad. Big mad. No, but it, it really did. Um, <clears throat> so I, I listened to the to the to the nine one one calls. Um, one of the guys seems more sure of himself, like his story, than than the other dude. Um, I can't remember which one if it was the second or first caller. They're two different voices, you know what I mean. So I know they're not like the same voices. Um. The stories aren't really the the same, you know. The one guy says, uh, I, "It is kind of strange how the one guy says, yeah, I got a bunch of people behind me.'" Um, and then he goes on to explain, like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm looks like somebody might have been walking down the road and he got hit, and he's on the on the shoulder." Um. But did you stop? I mean, it, I like, what the fuck? Are you stopped and there's a bunch of people behind you? Are they passing you? What the fuck, you know? At least uh, the other callers, like, at least he stopped traffic so that, or at least, you know, stopped enough away from him so that nobody hits. I think that was the semi-truck driver because if you remember the Tyler dude, he said that when he got there, um, the semi-truck driver passed and turned around and came back and then had to go back again. You know, so that makes me feel like the first caller had to be Tyler. You think so? Yeah, because the way that he described it was he was already there when the semi-truck driver got there, and Jack was already there. Uh -huh. And the semi-truck driver had to go and into Terrell, so three miles, and find somewhere to turn around, and then came back. And by the time he came back, Jack was already there, the truck driver was already there. and Right, uh, but now when he's calling well i guess maybe he's it was right uh, after he passed it right the one guy the the second whatever which caller it is he's already there like so he's already stopped so nobody's there exactly that's what i'm saying so yeah. every one of their stories contradicts the other one right because and they all say they were first <clears throat> and again <laughs> nobody that second driver is never named we still don't know the name. And why of don't we have timestamps and vehicle descriptions and names? That's, that's a, another thing too. Is like the nine one one operators. You know, what I'm saying like I, I don't, um, I don't necessarily know if they uh, give you the the recording with the timestamps. You know, unless it's like a a video recording or something like that. I would imagine. Like maybe we could FOIA request the uh, and, and I'm pretty sure it would have timestamps then. But it, they sound like the 911 operator sounds like, huh? Like, what do you mean? There's and then the one guy does sound like, well, maybe. Like, how are you gonna say, yeah, it looks like a body, or it could have been a deer, but it's a body. Like, dude, it's a body or it's a fucking deer. Like, what are you trying to say? But the other dude is like, yeah. Um, and he even says he's butt ass naked, and it looks like there's some shorts uh in the middle <laughs> in the middle of the road. That dude, whoever that guy is, I'm gonna believe that guy. Cause he's like, I'm not even trying to get close. He's actually trying to protect the scene right he, uh, from contamination he knows not to get close enough and like you know poke the body and shit like that at least from what he's saying he's stating you know what i'm saying um and that's the one who sounds more short of their story than the other person the other person just 
<clears throat> I don't know. He says, I talked to a buddy. Like, what do you mean you talked to a buddy? Like, on the phone or on the truck you? with you? Like, yeah. He said a guy that works with him. And he's yeah. like, oh, it wasn't a deer. So that wouldn't mean he was had to be on the truck. I mean, how would he know what a deer looks like if you're talking to him on the phone? Right, right. So I'm, I, that got me like, like, what the fuck? So there was two people? There was a driver and a passenger? I'm thinking so that there was a there was a driver and a passenger unless he's like but so then, maybe that's why there's all the confusion with the two semi truck drivers because there was two people in the semi truck. It's very possible or the service truck. Tyler said that, that, that there wasn't anybody with Tyler according to his story. It was well, just Hank. I don't know if we can necessarily believe Tyler. Uh, uh, I don't. <laughs> I mean, unless Tyler's the fucking, the, neither one of them gave their names. So uh, I know unless t- Tyler's the one that's like, oh, yeah, man. Whoever's the dude that is like, yeah, I, I he parked. He said he didn't know any of them before. I mean, that's a lie. Right. But I, I parked, you know, I'm not trying to get close to the body. There looks like some shorts in the road, but I parked so that nobody can, you know, nobody will hit him. So uh, essentially he parked his truck, whatever, a big semi or the service truck. Just you know, I'm assuming like the block the drop the shoulder because he's been and the road. right? So that means he turned around and then came back and then parked a little down from him. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that uh, no one, you know, so that he could block with his right. So he he knew exactly what the fuck it was because he was outside of his fucking truck. He wasn't like guessing if it was a deer or whatever. No, he said it's a naked ass dude or a boy or whatever the fuck he said. And it looks like And then some- immediately the next sentence he refers to it as it. I didn't hear that part, but he's like, you know, there's some shorts. It looks like there's some shorts in the middle of the road. And he doesn't I don't think he says what color they are. But he's butt naked. Butt ass naked. He doesn't even say shorts. He says clothing. Right. He says a, a piece of clothing. He doesn't say shorts. Well, let's play it. Because I could have sworn he said shorts. Skirt. Can you hear that? Hello, everybody in the chat. Hello, we see stars. How you doing? Roddy, I don't know if the, uh, I don't know if we've seen any police reports on descriptions of the trucks. No. There's no sound to it. Yeah, okay, there's no sound. No sound, no sound. Still good.
no vocals. One one, what is your emergency? I on how might I be going just the words of Terrell in between Terrell and Ron, Oklahoma, it's probably about three miles north of Terrell. Drop down the road and I had a bunch of cars behind me, but it looked like somebody got scared, like somebody walking down the highway laying up on the shoulder of the road. It looks like somebody's laying in the road? Uh, like on the shoulder, like maybe they were walking and somebody hit them, unless it was a deer. It looked like a body. Okay. Um, you said, so on Highway 81, uh, in between north. Ryan and Terrell, just north of Terrell, about, it's probably about three miles, it's kind of in a low spot. Okay. Um, and is that, uh, Okay, look right here. This is the closest thing you'll see to any describing factor in the autopsy. It says, on the southbound side of the highway by a passing truck driver on September 4th at approximately 5.53 hours, he was naked and, and, and wearing un unmatching shoes. That's it. But that's the only timestamp that we have as well. Right. There was a pair of shorts found several feet from... Yeah, now listen to, yeah, that's the second caller, but I just wanted to show you like that, that's, that, this is the only police report, anything remotely close to right. what the police have put out. Let me see, is there anything else? Okay, there's a clump here found, okay, uh, with one of the lanes of the highway, so, okay, yeah, uh, the paved highway consists of, okay, two lanes, okay, it tells us that there's two lanes, speed limit 65, um, poorly lit because it was at night no vehicle parts or debris so there's that you know um uh yeah that's pretty much it yeah gonna be i'm trying to think which way that highway runs is it gonna be on your east west north or south i'm trying to think i'm sorry it, it goes north and south it, it runs out of duncan Okay, so what side of the road is that on? It's it on the west side of the road. Okay, let me see what I have on duty to go check that out. That's it. It, just, it looked awful odd. 911, what is your emergency? Yes, ma'am. I was driving to work. I'm south of Terrell, or north of Terrell, south of Ryan. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there's somebody laying dead along the road. They look naked. I'm staying back. Okay, I but. just um, had um, two calls on that, and um, I have a deputy headed that way. All right, well, I'm and sitting you? here blocking the road. Oh, are you there waiting? Okay. Because he's what, right, what, the body's laying right on a white line. Oh, that, it is a boy. He's naked, and he's white, laying on the white line. He's naked. I, I turned around because I just about hit it because there's a deer run across the road, and I'm like, First, I thought it was a deer, and I was talking to a guy at work with him. I'm like, I don't think that's a deer. Yeah, that's what that my first caller said. Thought it was a deer, and then when he looked back and he said, "No, there's no way that's a deer." <laughs> no, no, and it, it actually looks like there's a piece of clothing maybe laying in the middle of the road. Now, I'm about. I don't want to get too close. I just. Jeremy, right now. No, this is don't. another 911 call that looks and looking at it. Oh, she's already been in touch with Jeremy. Okay. Yeah, Jeremy's going to head that way. Jeremy's heading that way. She's on the other side. Okay, okay um, so you're staying there or? Yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and make sure nobody runs it over or anything okay. else. I mean, I have a patron, uh, art reporting party staying there until a deputy gets there to okay. block so nobody hits them again. There is a uh, reporting party that's going to sit there with flashers on it. Yeah, he does say clothing. Um, and then all of a sudden it goes from him to it. Right. It says, yeah, um, so nobody hits it. Hmm. I'm thinking there's some there's somebody in the truck with this dude. This the sec the sec this guy, the second caller. 
Well, I guess that would technically yeah, make him the third caller, today. according to the dispatcher. If she huh? had two calls, that would make him the third caller because she said she had two calls prior. Well, yeah, if if that guy also called too, but why? Well, that's what why she said. She said, I just, I had two other calls about this and I have a deputy on, on the way. Is that Jeremy? When no, that's says, the sheriff. Who? The, Jeremy is the sheriff. Right. She says, you know, oh, I got Jeremy on the way. And it sounds like he hears the the name Jeremy and he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, he said, all right. Right. Like if he knows who the fuck Jeremy is. Yeah, which wouldn't surprise me because they all know each other. And, and aside from the fact that it's a shut up, Eddie, a super small town, I get that. But I mean, we're not talking um, Terrell, you know, the Terrell chief of police. This is the Jefferson County Sheriff, like the county sheriff. But in the county, the Jefferson County never at any point have said this was their investigation. And they immediately, because of him being on the highway, said it was OHP. But guess who was the last one to get there? OHP. They're pro well, they're probably a Guess who, so who's dispatch we don't hear none of? OHP. Right. When did they get the call? Because we also have that weird-ass fucking firefighter little snippet of their dispatch, and that's at 634. Is, now, is, can we play that, and can we see if, the, if it sounds like the same chick? So this one, obviously, there's more than one person in this... Um, 911 operator answering place. You know what I mean? Because she was obviously talking to somebody else right there. Now, the with the fire one, it don't, I don't know, it's possible maybe somebody's there, but it don't sound like nobody else is there. But let's find out. And let's see if maybe the voices sound the same. Give us a, a timestamp right there, six thirty-five. Right, and but that you're telling me it took them an hour to dispatch the fucking the first responders. I guess. And, and five forty-six and five fifty-three are when the nine one one calls allegedly came through. Well, we don't know about these ones right here because they don't give us a timestamp. Right, but according to the uh, autopsy, it says five fifty three. But which one is it? I have no yeah. idea. And how accurate yeah. is it? I have no idea. We go off of that. Right. I would rather go off like okay, the nine one one operator giving us a fucking a timestamp just like that nine one one operator did, or whatever the operator was. Twenty four. In route. Who's this? Fire department. Six thirty five. Okay. The level of professionalism just left the door for this case, you know, for this call I, all, from the beginning to the end. Right. Um, right. I don't think it's very protocol, you know, I don't to, to discuss your previous 911 call with the next one. Uh, it, you, what do you mean? Is it like protocol her to, to say me? to be talking about it? Like, oh, yeah, my last caller just said the same thing. Like, why would you say that? That's that's completely out of bounds. Mm. 
because that will fuck up that that and that fucks up the integrity of the investigation. It creates bias and it will influence to make people want to say the same thing that you've already heard, so that you're not, you know, it, it it's not professional at all, and you're taught to not do that. I don't know if that's you know exactly a thing. Like, it, can you imagine nine one one callers be like, "Yeah, man, can let me just tell you about my last call. It was so crazy." Can you imagine? Can you imagine the I'm, shit? I'm, but like, say, okay, look, uh, there's a there's this um, they caught the serial killer guy. I can't remember his name. In oh fuck, I'm gonna forget. It's a big old big old fucking dude. He's like seven foot tall. Um, anyways. This girl had ran from this one dude's house and she's running and she's knocking on doors and shit. And she's screaming and, and people are calling 911, right? And they say the same thing though. Like, you know, when another person's calling and he's like, yeah, you know what? There's somebody. Some That's at 715. And when did Caleb say that he called his dad? Uh, Noah's dad? As soon as he got there, which he said that he got the call around 6 and went straight there after he picked his dad up and they were already on scene. There was already firefighters and all that on scene. So that would mean that he only called him around 7 and that's a, they live an hour away. Yeah, so how are they there at 7.15? I don't know, because uh, Caleb's a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> he threw in a fucking monkey wrench. He loves throwing them fucking monkey wrenches. What is What does we got here? I saw a video of five to six punching him, not the slapping everyone is talking about. Once he was on the ground, they started kicking him. This video has since vanished, which is no surprise considering phones were white. I know 100% what I saw. Uh, who was punching him and kicking him? Just asking. I hope you have told this to the right authorities. Who is Tessie? Uh. Saw a video five, six, not slapping green, kicking him. This video has since. Is this the same thing? All of his injuries were above the waist. Police have ruled that out. Um. Video of him being beat five to six guys. Once he was on the ground, they started kicking him. The video has since disappeared. No surprise considering phones wiped. He definitely wasn't body surfing. What the fuck does that mean? What did you what did you point out again? It keeps going like in and in and out of focus. Reply to da, 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 da. Lay Wilson and all of his injuries were above the waist. Police have ruled that out. Okay. Uh, 100% saw a video. Wasn't body surfing or there would have been a lot more. Where was he found and your brain doesn't swell after death he was unalived beforehand and beforehand and brought to that location who the fuck <clears throat> bam okay this is 
Sarah Long. I am related to AC and CC. And I was there at the party house by 8, 10 a.m. That morning, I'm not attacking KP. I just agree with police wait, on wait, wait, this. Wait, she, wait, she's supposed to be the smart one. She don't have to say a.m. and then that morning. I think KP timeline is off a little, or maybe he has some sort of false memory from tra from trauma. He certainly doesn't need to be attacked or threatened. That's horrible, and my family knows exactly what that's like. My nieces, AC and CC, both receive death threats daily and have been followed, and they're proper property damaged i just think when you have 40 people at a party all their eyewitnesses accounts will vary no one is going to remember something the same i think police are looking more into the fact that kp story is the only one that doesn't match their Didn't I fucking say that? Didn't what? I say that? I know. They're what setting the his ass up. Doesn't match their what? All that pretty much when I remember I told you all they had to do was all stick to their story and say nothing. And then when Caden's story is the only one that's different, you're going to be the fall guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. The GeoNet or GeoFence. They don't have KP phone pinging near Noah until after 6.15 a.m. So I think that's probably why they have discredited his account. And who the fuck is this chick? Stevie's uh, sister. Yeah. I'm related to Avery Carter and what's her name? Avery and Carter Combs. Who CC again? Carter Combs. Carter Combs. That's right. <clears throat> Carter, she doesn't go by. All right, guess me. There, yeah, yeah. Damn. I wrote this fucking novel. <laughs> Sarah, okay, party house. It's the party house. I think it's Stevie on Sarah's account because Sarah is a teacher and actually intelligent. And this has since shifted since Stevie went radio silent. All right. I'll be able to tell if it's her or not. Believe. Best believe that shit. I don't think anybody that works in education should have that poor AM in the morning. You get, you, you don't have to say both. <laughs> the party house JN was staying at is one mile from the scene. I think the truck driver called first at five fifty three. Jane arrived at the scene at six Oh five or close to it. He only stayed a few minutes at the scene, like maybe five minutes or less, and the party house is literally two minutes away. Huh? JN told the truck driver and service truck driver he needed to call his dad and go tell his friends. Noah was dead, so he left the scene at 6.10. That would give him five minutes to make it one mile back to the house 
to wake everyone up. The police have JN phone location so they can see he's not lying about his timeline. They know he left to go tell his friends. After he woke them up, then KP and a few other guys loaded up into his red Jeep and went to the scene. And I believe they were told by the service truck driver they didn't need to be there to see Noah's deceased. So he told them to leave because 911 was on their way. I think police have KP phone pinging there closer to 623-ish. This is according to OHP. And you expect us to believe that they're telling you this inside information, yet the family's been in the dark and everybody else. And, and better yet, if they are, what the fuck for? Right, right. I mean, that's... <clears throat> so it would seem the ones in the dark would be Kate and Pressy and Noah's family. But everybody else is like, yeah, um... We Anybody that's not the Newtons or the fucking Avery or the, the Combs and the Howards are, yeah, absolutely, you're right. Yeah. yeah, like, we know everything because the cops have told us everything. What in the fuck? I'm not sure if that was her because that bitch sure as shit loves to use end after a period to start a new sentence. I can't stand that shit. All right. Still not understanding how TH doesn't see a red Jeep pull up to the scene and four boys jump out if there was only three vehicles and three people on scene. Uh, the story I got from Jack Newton was the red Jeep pulled up and Jack Newton said none of them got out of the Jeep. I think he said they just kind of rolled down the window and the truck driver kind of waved them on like get out of here. Jack Newton also said a white car pulled up and the people never got out but they eventually drove off to uh, TH may not have genuinely seen them since Jack Newton says Caden Pressy never got out of the Jeep. Since Jack Newton says Caden Pressy never got out of the Jeep. What the fuck? So now Jack is saying, I know what Caden did. He never got out, but Caden's like, motherfucker, I got out my motherfucking shit. Walked up about 10 feet, 15 feet away and was like, let me go get a fucking thing and throw over this motherfucker. What's wrong with these people? Long. No was emancipated by the state of Oklahoma, so he was responsible for himself. No, Noah also had a cooler and brought his own alcohol. Whiskey he stole from his grandma's house and beer that an older boy from Comanche named G.H. purchased for him. Police had Noah's phone and learned of this GH buying him alcohol. So at what point in this situation is Noah responsible for his own acts? Bitch, what the fuck? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, let me see. Noah's responsible for his own act. 
Yes, it's a tragedy and very unfortunate accident, but he chose to attend a party and he chose to drink and he chose to leave the party. I'm not sure what charges will be brought in against who since there is a lot of factors involved and who would be charged with manslaughter when we don't something, 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 something. Um, can we like throw something at this person? We don't. Where are we at? Am I lagging? Are you lagging? Grandma's house. Uh, Grandma's house and beer that an older boy can actually name. Do, 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 do. Uh, when we manslaughter driving, even know who was driving that could have possibly hit him with their vehicle, and what if it was a total stranger on the highway? I'm not dismissing anyone's something, 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 manslaughter, yeah. And who would be charged? What the fuck? Oh, okay, well, they ruled out a hit and run. Right? So there's fucking that. I don't know what's wrong with people. Yes, I'm aware of social hosting. A lot of factors will be at play when it comes to social hosting. No one let him leave, though. That's the pro. Let me state that again. No one let him leave, though. That's the problem. Only one girl saw him actually walk off, and he told her he was going to cool off and he'd be back. He never said he was leaving, so she thought he meant I'm going to to cool off, and I'll be right back. Why in the fuck are they repeating themselves? Everyone is asking her why she didn't stop him, but he was mad, and he's a 6'2 wrestler. She wouldn't have been able to physically stop him, from leaving anyways plus she said she tried once before to stop him from leaving at a rodeo they attended earlier in the summer and he spit on her and she was afraid of him a little bit so she would have never been able to stop him what in the actual fuck This this has got to be children children right now. This the children are writing this shit. No adult writes like this. I mean, <laughs> let's see where am I? Uh, so. Uh, she thought he meant going back. Okay, everyone asking her why she didn't do the 6 2 earlier, spit, frayed, whatever. She didn't think he was leaving. He never indicated he was leaving, just going for a walk to cool off. Uh, would he still be considered a minor at 19 if he was emancipated? The state of Oklahoma deemed. Huh. 
We still were considering Oklahoma deemed him an adult. Nice try, but what's the legal drinking age in Oklahoma? Last I checked, it was 21. So that's a minor in that sense under the law. Under Oklahoma social host laws, it's illegal to permit anyone under age of 21 to possess or drink alcohol in your home or on your property. <laughs> Again, a lot of factors will come into play with that whole emancipation thing. As a parent, I can illegally allow my 18-year-old daughter to drink at a house party if I'm with her. Seeing how the state of Oklahoma deemed Noah, deemed Noah an adult and he makes decisions for himself, now in place of his parents, who's to say those rules don't apply in this situation? Because, bitch, um, 21 is the legal drinking age. Doesn't matter if you're fucking emancipated or not. Uh, my bad. Sorry, everybody. Anyways. Uh, social the other minors, like the 15 year old and the 16 year olds that were throwing up. No shit, right? Like, let's just forget about all them and let's forget about your fucking nieces and whoever the fuck else was there and your family. Stupid fucking. I don't know. Any. My bad. Um, I'm just here to read everybody. Uh, who's to say those rules don't apply? Social hosting on your first offense is a misdemeanor. It's a $500 ticket and no one was killed on. <laughs> <laughs> homeowner can't control what happens if someone chooses to leave the property well <laughs> I'm glad you saw a lawyer and they told you that bullshit I believe when OHP and OSBI publicly announced they weren't investigating his death as a murderer we were told by law enforcement, here we go, we were told by law enforcement that he died on the highway. Noah's family has also been told they believe Noah died on the highway in some type of accident, whether it be he fell from the back of a tru of truck or he was hit. Police know he died on the highway Due to forensics. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Let me see. They definitely cherry pick which laws they want and don't want. At some point, you have to be held accountable for your own actions. Both of these very well could have possibly happened. I do see him possibly being clipped by a truck flying in the air and landing on his neck. So many possibilities. Oh, yeah, because um, that happens in movies all the time. But not reality. Okay. Uh, how do we do possibilities? Wonder where all the beat to death with golf clubs went. Huh? Pretty sure that the group. Pretty sure that their group interview was only called that due to OHP and OSB both being present for the interview. And this is this is homegirl. And no police have never asked for everyone in all caps at the party to come in for an interview only a selection of the party goers and this is fucking definitely her because it goes period and 
The ones that were asked to come in have been very cooperative with law enforcement, period. However, some did not end up attending the group interview due to their lawyer not being able to be present, comma, which the lawyer advised them to not speak with law enforcement without him their period and they did let law enforcement know and since then law enforcement has not reached back out for an interview yes i believe something 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 that's that that was definitely fuck stevie right there 100 fucking percent Yes, I be- What is this group interview bullshit? Yes, I believe the group interview with law enforcement was called group because it involved more than one law enforcement agency. The party goers that have been interviewed, it's been independently. They have not ever gotten the party goers together in one room to do an interview my niece ac and cc were scheduled and had to reschedule their group interview because their attorney had a conflict that day but the interview was rescheduled and both girls met with both osbi and ohp for over 3.5 3.5 hours. They have cooperated fully since the start and willingly gave up their phones. Despite the rumors that Robin is spreading, they have fully cooperated. Just because someone meets with law enforcement with an attorney present does not make them guilty. Police have not called them back in since the last interview. <laughs> Encrypt says, I believe I could fly. Ain't that the truth? Motherfuck. Uh, I have a couple questions about the group interview. Was it within a few days of the death? Did police ask everyone at the house that morning to come? Who didn't come? Question mark. Curious on timelines, large discussions about KP timeline versus everyone else's timeline. Thoughts also research eyewitness testimonies reliability. Um, I agree. Basically, add an hour on and it makes sense for the most part some things are still off but adding an hour makes more of it makes sense yes it's a huge leap to think he was an hour off either way law enforcement knows by phone records if he is correct or not Well, yes, it is a huge leap. One hour can determine who could actually be the perp. You see this person above the I agree and basically blah, blah, blah. That's the same person as somebody else because they say the same shit like three times. That's not true. J-N-A-C-C-C-L-J-J-M have all answered questions. They just haven't came out on a public forum like KP and given their accounts because they were advised not to by police and attorneys. Their stories haven't changed either. They they all willingly gave up their phones within 24 hours to the police and none of their Phones were reset. Those are all rumors. They 
have all been interviewed by law enforcement agencies on multiple occasions and their stories haven't changed again this bitch is like three different people because she does this shit again she's saying the same fucking thing that she just set up here they all been interviewed by law enforcement agencies multiple occasions they haven't changed their stories either why isn't anyone asking kp why his phone wasn't turned over voluntarily for over a month and why did police tell all the other kids there they know kp's story about being woke up at 5 15 by jack newton is false they don't have his phone ping <laughs> Where am I at? Okay. Uh, tell all other kids. Okay. Woke up. 515. False. They don't have his phone pinging there at that time. Police have told Jack Newton and the other kids they know KP's timeline is just off a little. There. Like their like their pr property were two eyewitnesses that saw the Presbyterian walk off in white shorts, and eight eyewitnesses, truck driver, service truck driver, VFF. Under sheriff and OHP that morning at the scene that all saw his white shorts laying on the highway and they were not folded. What the fuck? Trip it off. <clears throat> uh uh, processed or if the folded shorts is another rumor because all the VFF and OHP I spoke with have said those shorts weren't folded in what the fuck hold on son of a bitch My laptop is about to die. Son of a bitch. What the fuck's going on? Uh, yeah. I'm about to die. You're going to have to take over. All right. So it says, um, in fact, OHP has started or stated to Jack that they suspect Noah may have crawled out of them, possibly dragging himself to the shoulder by looking at the trail of blood. Not to mention, there was other forensic evidence found on the white shorts. I'm assuming since police have publicly stated they're not investigating his death as a murder, then they are leaning towards it being an accident. If police believed Caden's story, then it would have been investigated as a murder. I would think. Ellie has a lot more evidence than we, the public, have, so I'm trusting they know more than Caden on this one.
Okay, so she says, no, OHB has not been communicating with me. Jack was interviewed by OHP recently and took a lie detector test, which he passed. I've spoken with Jack directly, and he told me during his interview, OHP told him they know Noah died on the highway due to forensic evidence found on the highway, and they suspect he fell out of the back of a truck or he possibly jumped from the back of a truck. I think OHP is looking to figure out who picked him up. Was it a party goer leaving or a random person traveling that road? I believe that's why OHP and OSBI made a public statement saying they were not investigating Noah's death as a murder. I'm not sure if any of the kids have changed their stories with Ellie. Those stories have stayed consistent. The bits and pieces we see on Facebook are just these kids maybe getting on and defending or trying to vaguely answer questions or explain things, but they are all kids, so I don't read too much into what they type sometimes. Things get misunderstood or misconstrued through text. I do know that for a fact that Avery and Carter did three and a half hours worth of interviews with Ellie and they have not changed their accounts of what happened. Those interviews have been recorded by their attorney and I'm their aunt, so we've been able to listen to those interviews. I will not disclose what questions were asked to the public. I can say Noah's aunt Robin has been... Spreading rumors stating the girls showed up to their interviews with an attorney and did not cooperate. That's a complete lie. Both girls have been to multiple interviews and willfully gave up their personal property, including phones, so that Ellie would not have to get a warrant and slow down the investigation. Both girls have sat through multiple interviews for hours, giving their accounts and answering questions. Yes, they did have an attorney present. Robin claims they're guilty since they hired an attorney, but really, it's ignorant to believe that. I could never speak to Ellie without an attorney present, and neither would we allow our children to, hence the reason we hired an attorney. I support Ellie wholeheartedly, but again, I think it's important to have an attorney present during an interview or interrogation to protect both parties involved, including the integrity of the investigation. Then she says, there was no bloody trail leading to the highway. There was a bloody trail on the highway. Investigators could see where he initially landed due to a blood splatter. Then they could see a trail of blood where he possibly crawled. All the blood I'm referring to was contained on the highway near Noah's body. Law enforcement told Jack that they know Noah was killed in some kind of accident on the highway and they suspect he fell or jumped from the back of a vehicle. Jack was told this by Ellie when he went in for questioning and took his lie detector test, which he passed. Law enforcement believed he fell from the back of a vehicle, but the medical examiner believed it was a hit and run. From my understanding, and since the two agencies didn't come to an agreement, his autopsy reads unknown cause of death due to transportation injury. It was explained to me by attorneys that the medical examiner and Ellie do agree... His death was caused by a vehicle. That's the reason transportation injury was checked. Shit. Uh, 
Yeah, this is some bullshit. I'm not going to be able to, to read any of that because I'm on my phone right now. Alright, let me just get it where I can see it split, split screen. Yeah. Okay. Why, like, okay, I have, here's a question. Why are they, why is law enforcement telling fucking Jack all this shit, but they're not telling the family this shit? Thank no, you. No, I'm saying like, do these people just think that everybody's just stupid? So I said they're either lying or we got a big problem. Right. Well, yeah, you're 100%. Yeah. They're lying or law enforcement is trying to fuck somebody over. Yeah, because the, the, the math ain't mathing on that. Not, not at all. And why is it that, you know, these these this group of kids got called in and, and they're questioning Kate. Why, why didn't get Kate and get called in? Well, fuck, bitch. Um, we don't know. It seems like you have all the answers with fucking law enforcement. Why don't you fucking ask them? Yeah. Bizarre. Almost like they knew that he wouldn't tell the same story they did. Exactly. <laughs> And then they say, uh, Caden's story is the only, is the only one that, that it isn't the same. No. Um, it's the only one telling the truth. Right. It, none of you other motherfuckers, kids, whatever the fuck. I mean, I don't know how many of them, but none of the other kids' stories match any of their fucking right. stories. Right. And he is the only one that was the close to sober. Right. <laughs> These fucking people. So this is Mallory Hardy, Tyler's wife. Um, I'm only commenting to say this, then I'm done. I don't believe Tyler has ever commented on Jack leaving or not. Those have been assumptions and people adding in their own verbiage at the time. But this, but like in your previous comment about if Stevie is in these groups and I'm missing her comment saying he is saying this or what, I will need that proof as well. So if you could please private message me those screenshots you say you have, please. As for Jan asking, I can also say Tyler has not said he did not see Caden or his red Jeep. I'm only commenting on behalf of Tyler now because if anyone else in these groups are saying Tyler said this or that again without facts and I'm missing the comments, then I'm going to need those screenshots as well for documentation purposes, please. Thank you. <laughs> So all the first and it just and it, and it didn't shit. Did he or fucking did he not? Stop fucking playing word salad. Right. <laughs> oh, and yeah, we'll give you that information right away, lady. Um, because you're you're so fucking you're fucking, fucking champion. Yeah. yeah. Does it matter? Why do you want to see what you said? Does that change the answer? Does that change the truth? Right. Just because like, you're saying. Well, I would. I don't recall saying that. I'd have to say it. What? <laughs> Did you say it or not? Right. And were you there, or was your husband supposedly? Fuck it. I wonder, man. Maybe she was. So we got Brooke, fucking Brooke, who admitted, she says, who admitted to tampering with evidence? Factory resets. Golf clubs missing means zero to me. His memory is off and we have proof. And who the fuck are you, bitch? So, how, how do they have proof that his memory's off? Because they say so and they're going to gaslight. If they repeat it, you know, three times, four times, they're convincing themselves and they hope in the same time they convince you. That's why they repeat it so many times. They're not, they're reassuring themselves. Because they don't believe the shit. They don't believe it themselves. That's why they have to keep repeating themselves. Right. 
Sarah says, I'm related to Avery and Carter. We get it, bitch. You said it eight times. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. I love these people. Godly. It's like Stevie never left. Right? Watch. She'll repeat the same fucking thing that she's going to say. I'm not reading it again. (laughs) Oh, shit. I'm related to AC. I was there at the party house by 8, 10 a.m. that morning. It's word for word. (laughs) I'm not attacking KP. It's the same shit. Just because someone retains an attorney doesn't make them guilty. Innocent people can retain an attorney to help guide them through the interrogation process without jeopardizing the case. It can be helpful to have an attorney, especially for young people when a death is involved. I would never let my teenagers talk to Ellie without an attorney present, but that doesn't make them guilty. Mm. Well, I mean, I agree with that. Um, I wouldn't talk to I wouldn't talk to law enforcement either if there was a death. Um, because one of you motherfuckers is guilty. Not everybody can afford an atto- attorney. You fucking oh, we got deep pockets, ass bitch. True that. Mm-hmm. Oh, this bitch. <laughs> no one has admitted to tampering with evidence, missing golf clubs, and factory resetting phones? Question mark. Did you read that from Facebook? Question mark. Because that's false, period. And I would hope they would have lawyered up. Because when talking to L.E. regarding an investigation, especially one like this, comma, it's dumb to not have one, period, period. Especially because lawyers are educated about the laws and understand court rules and decisions, period. And Caden didn't retain a lawyer because he said he couldn't afford one. Which is weird because in court you have the right to be appointed one period period but not my animals not my bitch it's not my circus not my monkeys you idiot (laughs) not my animals not my circus That's, that's that's stevie additionally comma i know someone personally who woke kaden up that morning when people and When people started showing up at the party house after, in all capitals, finding Noah and after police had already started the investigation, period, period. And, of course, when he woke up, comma, he went looking for his shoes, which one was on Noah, comma. But he denies all of this, question mark, weird, comma. But like I said, not my circus. No, that's not what you said. You said not my animals, you dumb bitch. (laughs) And you speak with, um, you write or whatever the fuck. You end a sentence with a period and you start a sentence with end. Not even the word and the symbol, which is so much right? more crazy. Ugh. She's, trying to, she's trying to switch it up because she'll, you, before when it was her, her, she was using end. Now she's trying to switch it up to make it seem like it's not her, but it's still the same illiterate shit. She says, oh. But you sure do try to make everything your business. It's not my monkeys, not my circus. Get it right if you're going to say it. (laughs) She says, okay, white girl. What the fuck? What the fuck? (laughs) Didn't know I tagged you, sis, but go off. You're just a little bit of sass with a little bit of crazy, comma. So quirky of you, vomiting emoji. Don't bark when your scary ass won't bite, Texas gal. <laughs> that sounds like fucking don't hunt what you can't kill. <laughs> she said, I think once KP posted his side of the story, he should have expected to be questioned. Also, when did he talk to the police? Is it, to my understanding, it took him a month or so. I was told by his mom that he didn't talk to the family until October 9th. To Noah's family? Yeah, that's not true. Oh. So Sarah says, yes, two eyewitnesses, whoa. Two eyewitnesses saw, not seen, saw 
Now this is supposed to be the fucking the 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 one that works for the board of education in all what in Texas. Okay. <laughs> Or this is Stevie on her sister's account. That's why Stevie's right. never doing talent. No shit. So there's also, okay, saw Noah walk off in white shorts. There's also a Snapchat of Noah eating yogurt in the kitchen after he got out of the shower, wearing the white shorts. I've seen the snap. It was on my niece's phone. She turned over to authorities, but I saw it, like saw, like I saw it before she turned it in. Those snaps have not been released to the public. Yes, on Sunday night, Noah was wearing black shorts in the video and pics that have been posted online. But sometime after midnight, Noah took a shower and after he got out of the shower. <laughs> after he got out of the shower, he then put on white shorts. I have seen the snaps of him after his shower in white shorts. Those snaps and videos have not been released. Bitch, you just said that. I was also there when his black shorts were picked up off of the bathroom floor and offered to law enforcement. Law enforcement looked them over and told my niece to give them to his family so they were returned to Noah's brother. Noah was not wearing a shirt all night, so I can't speak on what happened to his shirt, but I do believe his belongings were returned to his family. <laughs> yeah, she, she's got to reaffirm everything that she's saying. Except for Noah's phone. Law enforcement did keep his phone, and Noah had brought a cooler with beer and whiskey, so I believe police did confiscate his cooler as well. June fucking flower idiot. That makes sense. No, it fucking don't. I I believe he changed after the shower. Those, And there's videos of that as well. Well, thank fuck. Don't make her say it again. <laughs> Has that been corroborated by the by the family that that Noah had his own cooler and whiskey that he stole from his no parents? No. Okay. So, so she says they were offered to law enforcement. I was standing there when they were offered to law enforcement. Period. Law enforcement looked over them. They said, "Quote, give them to family." Period. Quote. Le. Law enforcement did search around the outside property. And they took the ATV in for an inspection, but never found any blood on it, period. Just dirt, comma, grass, the normal stuff found on an ATV, period. So it was returned by law enforcement, period. I believe between 2.55 and 3.15 a.m. is what I have been told. When he wasn't back by 3.30, I believe that's when the kids started looking for him. He had walked off the night before, too, and they found him a few miles away. That's something fucking new. 255-315 is... Oh, it's funny because all the phones went radio silent at 314, bitch. Right. And he walked away... He walked uh, off yes. the other and night? Before, two, and they found him a few miles away at the river and brought him back. He walked off four other times that summer at different parties or places, so the kids just figured he would come back like always. I do believe he was headed back to the party when he was killed in the highway. Not on in. What? Killed in the highway? And not on in. Because <laughs> his drunk ass that couldn't even bathe himself made it to the Red River and back and, and, and then got run it over on the way back. But did all this in 27 minutes. Don't forget it. Right. Right. What the fuck? An army crawled out of Jack's shorts. That's why they came off in the road because there was a blood trail where Noah dragged himself to the shoulder of the road after he was hit. Come on. What the really? fuck, lady? Okay. Now, especially when his neck or where his head was fucking separated from his fucking spine or whatever, you know what I mean? He was basically decapitated, but without being decapitated. But he was still army crawling. Right. And, and army crawled out of his shorts, but left his <laughs> shoes on. <laughs> right. And that's how the hair got in the middle of the road and on his ass cheek. Because he army crawled? Yeah, and left a trail of blood. Where's the fucking trail of blood? 
trail spot, you know, tomato, tomato. <laughs> and there was blood splatter that indicated that Noah's head hit the road and like he jumped out of the back of the truck or was pushed. But there's blood splatter that says so and says so in blood splatter. Did I say, well, hey, blood splatter. Did One more time. You want me to say it again? I'll put it in all caps and put a period <laughs> and say blood splatter. Forensics. Document it. <laughs> what the f- like you can say big fancy words that make you sound smart, but when you say them the way you do, it just it, it's like words. What bitch? <laughs> no, that reminds me of fucking sparkles. Ugh, stop trying so hard. Right? Like fucking a, just and stop trying to reaffirm everything that you're saying to yourself because um. It's showing. Just need to say it once, and that's right. it. Uh, and it's annoying to have to read it that many times. Can you imagine typing it like, "Bitch, just get go to take a nap." It, it, right. Why does it? We you think you need us to believe you more than we do? Because I couldn't give a f- you could say it till the fucking cows come home, bitch. I don't believe shit you say. Right. And the more you repeat yourself, the more you're annoying me. Remember, well, remember, like, how do we say? There's only certain things they repeat, and there's got to be a reason they feel the need to push that. That's what I feel like is bit like it's all lies, but I think those are the big lies. Well, it's it's like you know I say you know let people fucking talk, and like when they start fucking saying shit that you're not even asking them about, it, this is a bunch of shit. Like, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Why are you bringing up shit that nobody's really even asking? this bitch again <sighs> troll somewhere else the whole point is obtaining justice all capital now lowercase for all capital noah back to lowercase aside from all the bullshit lies period go back to your pinterest boards and the crunchy facebook group peace emoji Then, okay, then bye. We don't need the ignorant, this bitch, the ignorance. Mm. At some point with a smiley face. It's Ignorance is bliss, I guess, huh? <laughs> the fuck is wrong with these people? Oh, so many things. Okay. You, think, if they, you know, got money, you should be able to fucking read, bounce a checkbook. Speaking of that, okay, wait till you get to the end of this video. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, the irony of that is going to be so funny. Sorry, Stevie. So, <laughs> this public record is not your friend today, Biatch. <laughs> so, Brooke says, yes, as in reading or as in needing, sorry, restraining orders, period, 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 period. <laughs> The girls had to get one against the lady. And guess what? Exclamation point. Question mark. People talked horribly about them getting one. Period. This lady was completely unhinged and dead set they were the murderers. Period. 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 <laughs> and what she's forgetting to add is those said restraining orders were dropped because they did not provide proof and refused to show a police report that they lied about filing. So the protection order that was for her, Carter, and Bub... Uh, um, Bub. Oh shit! Was dropped. Yes, yes, and that was against Donna Bond. What? Because she was being mean on Facebook, saying mean stuff. Damn! Come on, Bub. What's up? In but... fear of his life, I can. Im- I I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that fucking shit. Right. And then they couldn't provide a police report because they never actually reported it. But they just wanted to go in front of a judge and say, I'm in fear for my life. Give me a restraining order. Give me a restraining order. But I'm not going to make a police report because that's where the crime would be, would be filing a fake police report. But just give me the restraining order. Exactly. And it said, uh, denied, thrown out, and could not be re, um, you know, couldn't be brought back up later. Damn, damn, damn. Come on, bub. You're scared? You're scared? 
He skirted. He skirted. Little old just fuck a bitch. Right. That just goes to show, though, why are, they're trying to abuse. That just shows right there. They're you, they're very comfortable with abusing the judicial system. And I think had this case not picked up the attention that it has, and since it has, it probably would have went a different way. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If, if the people, if the townspeople didn't, and and probably you know nationwide people calling in, or whatever. Um, but mostly probably the townspeople are like, hey, you know what? This is some bullshit. Uh, this shit would have just been swept under the rug. Right, and I'm saying that restraining order probably would have went different because they, they know that they're under scrutiny and probably got other ABC different type investigations in. They better be by the book. Right, right. So These fucking bitch here, sorry. Brooke, such a nice lady. <laughs> Here's one more thing I think about often. Because we care, comma. I want your thoughts. Period. 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 The how often? Fuck? All capital. Numerous. Drunk. Lowercase. Kids. Comma. Plan and execute a perfect quotation beating murder quotation that there is zero evidence for support it. Comma. Not a peep from any of them on how it happened. Kids talk and they talk a lot. So do you. Comma. Some of the best law enforcement can't seem to figure it out, comma. It all happens last minute, too. I might add, question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm sorry, but that just doesn't make any sense to me, period, 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 period. Now a random vehicle accident, comma, possibly from a random person passing through, comma, makes a lot more sense on why things are taking so long to piece together, period, 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 period. What the f that she just wants this fucking random vehicle thing to run through, right? She needs it. Yeah, she ex exact. Yeah, one hundred percent. So it's funny that they know that you know they they can def they can define libel, defamation, slander. That's so funny. <laughs> Mudslinging won't be tolerated here. We are local, and this isn't a game, and damn sure not entertainment to us. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Stevie. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I now hear this bitch comes in again, and this is in the Noah, like this is in the family group. Says. I have a screenshot where she stated she didn't think he was murdered. Bitch. Who's who? Noah's aunt, Robin. Then Robin says he had a tattoo of a stick figure. That was not the writing that happened that night. Apparently Noah had a tattoo of a stick figure on his thigh. Huh. Yeah. Funny how these things just slip through the cracks, you know? Huh? <laughs> Can you translate what you just read into English? <laughs> uh, um, I'd have to phone a friend, like, <laughs> like AI. And they say if you use it after three a.m., it's like the devil. You know, it's like feeding uh, gizmo. <laughs> oh shit! Maybe we're like Rafkin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you, would you like some fish and chips? Would you like a squirrel? No. Were you, in the, like? boat, you the boat tipped over? <laughs> no, silly. I was in the water. Why are we in the water when the boat tipped over? Because the boat tipped over. No wonder. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh bloody hell. Oh <laughs> bloody hell. Oh god, what is this? Believe I don't even know. Oh, okay. Belonged there wait. Broke, there we go. Everything Sarah said above came straight from Jack from his interview. So I'm not sure why she is a liar question mark question mark. Uh because she opened her mouth like this. Uh but 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 <laughs> I may not be smart, but I know what love is. 
shut the fuck up. Right. Did Jack say that OHP told him Caden's phone pinged at the site around 623-ish during an interview? Here comes Caden's mom. She's a liar because she never woke my son up. She was never at the house when my son was there. Prove it. Because we could prove otherwise. It's blatantly obvious that the amount of lies being told it to discredit my son. Mm-hmm. Get him, Alicia. Wow. Homie, don't play that. That's right. And then Brooke says, prove what you're saying. You state you have proof, so where's here's your chance to prove she is a liar. Alicia says, you'll get to see it in court or on the news. <laughs> wow. I don't cater to you, bitch. You don't ever show proof. You just blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Just like some other motherfuckers. You got to show proof, but I don't have to. My proof is my words because my word is golden. Said nobody ever. <laughs> so, Brooke says, we mutually agree this wasn't a vicious murder, comma. We have proof the girls have been fully cooperative in anything OHP has asked for, asked or requested, period. Just thought I would throw out there a very vocal family member's thoughts if you still believe it was a horrible murder, period. Yeah, just reaffirm yourself like three or four times. Robin says, you're right. I don't believe this was a vicious murder. To think that any of Noah's friends would do this is unimaginable. What I do not appreciate is the lack of cooperation in the lying that has been going on, regardless of what happened. It makes people seem sus, as if they know the whole story and are trying to cover it. Evidence shows that Noah was not alone when this happened, and yet no one will tell us what exactly happened. Bitch, what would... Brooke, what would you... She, what are you co-signing, bitch? Mm-hmm. She still said you're lying, son of a bitch, and so is the rest of them scroungy fucks. But you, you want to add a boy? Girl, stop it. She says, okay, so we definitely agree. <laughs> this bitch is so goddamn What busy. the fuck? She just needs, she wants, she needs, she needs somebody to, she needs confirmation. Just please, just somebody, you know, just agree with w- at least the portion, portion of what I said so I can go back and tell everybody I was right and you said so. Exactly. Ex- fucking 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. So, okay. So we definitely agree it not being a murder. So if there's evidence that he wasn't alone, maybe if there was another kid there from the party, or maybe it was someone from the highway, but how was someone from the, how about the kids that truly do not know anything? The girl's story hasn't changed once. You know that you've been aggressive to them. I wouldn't allow my child to speak to you again. Damn sure wouldn't allow my child to even look Justin's direction. Oh, somebody's man. (laughs) Stating or trying to imply that the girls aren't cooperating is bullshit. They are, and they have, just maybe not with you or Justin. They gave up their phones the second they were asked for them, and they, in the morning it happened, they were at all interviewed for a while without any lawyers or adults with them. They have gone... I'd imagine she repeats herself 50,000 more times. She didn't include that in her screenshot. Imagine that. Didn't fit her narrative. Okay. That's definitely true, says Brooke, the fucking duck. I've never thought about that. My son says the same thing, and it drives me crazy. Dot, period, 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 period. They want them to talk, comma, which they have, comma. Robin, you spelled Robin wrong, just saying, aggressively. Went after one of the girls calling her a murderer, a murder, not a murderer, a murder, in the beginning at a football game in public. Well, usually that's where they're at, bitch. comma so i'm not sure how she would expect them to want to talk to her or anyone in their family period i damn sure wouldn't let my kids talk to them period and this is the 22 year old adult that was hosting the party you know bless her poor little pea picking heart right oh 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 plot twist Bouncing that checkbook. You see it? No, not yet. 
Oh, ah. okay. Oh, shit. What State of Oklahoma, okay, versus Howard Stevie Lee. Number CM23-00028. Criminal misdemeanor filed June the 23rd of 2023. Judge Gay, Honorable <laughs> Dick. Howard Stevie Lee, defendant. Whedon John M. District Attorney. Attorneys, none. Friday, June 23rd, 2023. Warrant of arrest. Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. Dismissed with cost. Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. Dismissed slash settled. Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. Warrant recall to sheriff. Counts. One, obtaining cash or merchandise by bogus check. <laughs> I told you the irony. I'm just that good. Well, oh, she's okay. She got all. They got all this fucking money, but she bet you can't write a good check. <laughs> Bitch, bad and bougie, but you fucking balling on the goddamn credit card. I see you. Uh huh. It's because she. Or did, did Bub cut? Did Bub fucking cut your cut your trust fund off? <laughs> I mean, who the fuck writes checks anyway? And much less who the fuck's bouncing checks in twenty twenty three, bitch? Bogus. I've never even heard that word. Like you are. That's just. It's so fitting. You bogus has biatch. But you see, no consequences. How do? First of all, how do you do that as a misdemeanor? And how is it you have a warrant for not coming to court and then all of a sudden it just disappears because you paid fines? The same thing that happened with Avery at the same yep. time, which is right around the right. time Noah died. You're right. What the fuck? Warrant recall to sheriff. Was that Jeremy too? Fuck. No shit. So information. Well, this is the fines. 83, entry with fee. Okay. Trauma revolving fund. What? 10% courthouse security fee, attorney general victim services unit, 10% of aggravated victim services fee. What the? I, what the? A dollar, $30. Bitch, everybody else would have like 10 zeros behind that shit. For real. $6, $5, $10, $1, $1.50, a dollar, $30, $3, $5. A dollar, three dollars, thirty cent. What the fuck? Fifty dollars. Oklahoma court information sheet. What? Effective. State notice of dismissal, warrant recall, warrant re on recall. So, yeah. Okay, now. Damn it. This is when. Okay. This is, you know, I have a confession. Sorry. Um, my name is Kaylee and I'm, uh, I'm just kidding. Um, no, yeah, I'm a mole or whatever cousin does. Yeah. I'm, it's official. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have been, I have, I have came to the dark side. I am a sofa sleuth because I needed content and I was desperate. I'm so sorry. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. I sent a request. They accepted me. So fuck that shit. Run it, bitch. You too stupid. And that means you. <laughs> but I'm going to screenshot everything I can while I'm in there until they boot my ass, which I'd imagine is soon. Hell yeah. So this is when they all started. They all. Okay. Just I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to build a narrative. I don't. I don't want to re wretch, you know. You don't want to revert? No, I don't want to wretch, you know. I mean, reach. <laughs> right, right. So, you just read for yourself. This is when Sarah said, became a member of SOFA Sleuths, um, June 11, 2024. Just a little, you know, food for thought. Carson Matlock. June the 10th. Gabby Torres, which is a cousin of the Millens, 
June the 10th. <coughs> Becky Barnes Matlock, which is Carson's mother. June the 10th. Stevie Howard, June 11th. Brooke Rounds Carter, June the 10th. Group was created on June the 10th. Wow. By Tim Howard. What? And the only friend that he has that's even in this country is Brooke Rounds Carter. Oh. What? Hi, Stevie. <laughs> this is also the account that messaged Carter being all weird and like, oh my God, I support you and I'm so, you're so brave. And with the right. whole, yeah, same Tim. <laughs> I mean, Stevie, so sorry. <laughs> 